Today we're going to be talking about a paper um, called Learning to Transduce with Unbounded Memory that was published by Google DeepMind last year um, and is one that I just thought was really interesting to work with and, and uh, would be a really kind of compelling blog post and one that's, that's perhaps a little bit more unique than, than something on just neural networks in general or something like that. So it's the first blog post I'm doing that's actually taking apart a paper that's kind of out in the, uh, in the open source. And um, I'm going to stick exclusively to the paper. There will be nothing really additional to it. Um, but I will be providing an implementation um, that you can play with uh, on your laptop and that, that converges on a CPU. So, you know, obviously um, DeepMind being who they are, they do a lot of the work on GPUs, um, Coded and Torch. Um, and what I really wanted to do with this blog post is make this paper as accessible as possible um, and understandable uh, and break it down into little parts that, that are kind of easy to digest. So that's the goal of the, the blog post in general and this video is just meant to accompany that. Um, I'm actually not going to just read the blog post. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work through and, and provide kind of a second resource for you to be able to learn it. If there's some part you were stuck on, um, then you know you can kind of listen to and watch this video and get perhaps a little bit different perspective. You know, different people uh, learn in different ways. So um, let's jump right in. Um, we're learning about neural stack machines. So um, what is a neural stack? Uh, well, first, I want to start with what a, a simple stack and, you know, is, and that kind of comes from the basics of computer science. Um, a very simple stack is defined by this kind of class here, uh, implemented as objects, and, and it has these two primary methods. So push and pop are really the only two things that a stack can do. A stack is very similar to a list, however, it's, it's sort of a more restricted kind of list where you can only interact with the list via these two methods. Now. Um, consider what you know about the word stack already. So when you stack a bunch of things in the corner, what, what are you doing, right? So you're, you're, you're putting one down and you're putting something else on top of that, putting self, something else on top of that, putting something else on top of that. Um, that's kind of the inspiration for the name of this data structure. So um, see this little ASCII art table that I'm, I'm marginally proud of. And um, in, when we create this very simple stack as an object, so implementing this class up here, um, we can see that uh, we push a book, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, onto the stack. Now pushing basically means you know, putting something into the stack. We push it onto the stack. So we, we, the stack was empty when we created it, and when we push something onto the stack, oh, the stack has a book in it, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Then we push another book, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, and what I want you to look at is, is sort of the top and bottom of the stack here. So, so when we print out the stack at this line, it, it generates um, this table right here. And uh, notice that the Sorcerer's Stone is, is on the bottom and the Chamber of Secrets is on the top. So now we've interacted with, with one method so far. There's actually a second method, right, pop. Um, so there's, there's push and pop. And if you look at push, you know, adds, adds the item to the stack. Um, and pop actually removes the top item that's in the stack. So the last thing that you put into the stack is what you get out. So it's kind of a... Uh, last in, first out data structure, you might say. Um, so, when we push these two books on, print it out, we can see the state of the stack right here. When we call pop, when we print this out, the first one that it pops is the last one that we put in, which in this case is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. When we pop again, we get Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. So at this point, the stack is empty again. So let's push on a few more. So we pushed on five more Harry Potter books. We look at it again, as you can see, the first one we pushed on is at the bottom, the last one we pushed on is at the top. This is what a stack does. A stack is really good for when you want to do things like reverse a sequence or when, when just your data access pattern lends itself to, to a last in first out type, type architecture. So um, that's, that's kind of the goal and, and, and also just as a, as a sort of uh, meta note, um, these are runnable, right? So you can change this code and break it and do all sorts of stuff with it. Oh no, I broke it. Terrible. Um, oh no, I deleted everything. Even better. So yeah, you can you can do all sorts of stuff um, with these, and they're kind of scattered throughout the blog post. Try to make it interactive so that you don't have to worry about dependencies and that kind of thing. So anyway, let's continue. Popping, pushing. We just talked about this. Um, so uh, notably, um, you cannot put something in the middle of the stack. You can only put it on top. You can't put it on the bottom. You can only put it on top. You can only push it onto the top, you can only pull from the top. You can't do anything with ones that are in the middle. They're basically blocked by whatever is on top of them, right? So it's just kind of like, um, kind of like in reality. You know, if you have the big old stack of books, you can try to pull one out from the middle. Um, you might not be able to pull it out, or you might knock over everything and make a big mess. So, anyway, uh, a neural stack, 
which is what we want to be able to build, is inspired by this stack. Now what a neural stack does is it has a stack-like memory. And we're going to get into what that, what that means later. But what, what we're really going to, to do is learn when to push and pop our input data so that we can correctly model some output data. Right? So we're going to learn when to push and pop. So if we know that a stack can do two things, it can push and it can pop, what we're going to hopefully learn how to do is, is given it's a set of input data and a set of desired output data, like you know the function that we want to be able to model, we're going to try to find the correct pushing and popping sequence to model our, our, our function, to model, model our input data and transform it into our output data. So how is it going to do this? Well, um, to understand kind of this question, we need to understand what a correct sequence of pushing and popping would look like, right? So first off, it's always sequential data, right? Good, good thing to know. Um, here's another example with a very simple stack. We push this sequence, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, onto the stack. Print it. You can see right here. Notice something. First one we pushed on is at the bottom. The last one we pushed on is at the top. Now when we pop all of these off and create a new list, we notice. So it started off 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it finished 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So this is the inherent nature of stacks. They're really good at reversing things. So let's say if your input data and your output data was 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and your output was 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and you wanted to teach a neural net to reverse a sequence like this, a stack would be a great memory architecture to do this with. And the correct sequence of pushing and popping would be push, 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 pop, 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 pop. pop. So push, 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 pop, 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 pop. That's the correct sequence. So in this case, it would be you would have 12, 12 examples, right? And, and you would push six times and pop six times. And if you did that successfully, then you would have successfully modeled this. So what we want to be able to do is present a data set to a neural network and have it figure out what the correct pushing and popping sequence is. Um, now there's some other benefits to, to the way this neural stack is, is architected um, to give us you know, a, a boundless memory uh, in theory. So, so unbounded memory is kind of the theme. Um, and the cool thing is that if if it, we trained like a reversal network, then in, in theory, um, we could just keep pushing, 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 pushing until we start extracting. It would actually save all that information. That's really new for neural networks. So neural networks have historically been really bad at memorizing stuff. Um, and you always have to play with kind of your hidden layer size and, and you know, your alpha rates and the number of layers you have to like sort of make them the right size to contain the contents that you want to be able to model. But with the neural stack, in theory, the, the memory um, can just be as large as you need it to be um, to, to remember the sequence of data that you're, that you're working with. So um, this is kind of the type of thing we're going to try to train the neural stack to do. There's a lot of other sequences that they work with in the paper. Um, this blog post didn't have time for all of them, but the one we're going to focus on here is, is like a toy example to explain how it works and get something working for us um, is going to be to reverse the sequence. So that's going to be kind of a theme throughout, throughout the blog post. All right, so cool. Um, that was part one, and um, we'll pick up with the next uh, the next part in part two. See you then.